PFR PMI. Well, if I six years before I tried taking PMI uh, courses, but after that I lost interest because I went to uh, PMI conference consecutively two years uh, in Bangalore, and I was only civil engineer sitting there. Everywhere I saw only software engineers talking software language. And all. So I lost interest that uh, this subject is only for the software, it's not a civil engineer stuff. Civil engineering by nature itself, uh, is, uh, by course nature itself is a project management. So I thought uh, I didn't have any inclination. My managers kept on telling that you should pass it, uh, we want to make use of your uh, exposure to train other people. For to train other people you need to take the And off late uh, last year, I think, I think so you now you cannot uh, get PM my certification because it needs uh, certain experience, four plus or five hundred hours of experience you have to show on in different uh, areas. This is a very, very promising field. As you grow after two or three years, you can think about uh, taking the PMP certification. It gives an endless opportunity. PMI does, PMP certification doesn't mean you should only become project manager. It is not only for project managers. Anybody who is involved in project, maybe project coordinator, if you want to enter into project management uh, arena, the first position is the project coordinator. Don't hesitate to take it. Project coordinator is the first and uh, uh, most junior position. Even the project coordinator, depending on the project complexity you are entering with and the project environment in which the project is done. Of course, if the project has uh, 200 uh, stakeholders, it is a great man. So in that project, working as a project coordinator itself is a challenge. So after two, three years, you can think about uh, uh, slowly getting into project. If you have some argument for uh, taking challenges, if you are ready to take challenges, uh, this is the right field uh, for you. Every day, every hour will be the uh, challenging and interesting. I have, um, not by desire, but by default I became the project manager. I was working in government, I wanted to... Uh, that's what I wanted to ask. In your profile, your start five years is in five government. Five years and job. six days I worked in government. And why you quit? And then you know <laughs> what is the reason. In government, working in government, it has another kind of uh, challenge. You have to compromise a lot of things. I had uh, with my um, personal influence, as I was able to sustain, and I switched to places, uh, two, three places where it can be, I can be comfortable without compromising my ethos. And finally, I came to the conclusion it is not possible. When it is not possible, there is no point in um, uh, loitering and wasting time there. So I quit. I was waiting for an opportunity. I got into project manager uh, invitation from CB Richard Ellis. I went to there. So that is how. I, uh, by, not by desire, but by default, I wanted to come out of government, so I get into project management. So I didn't desire to become project manager. Since that day, I took the project management as my profession, and I never had a boring day. Every day was interesting, challenging, uh, triggering, tempting, what not. Everything is there in that. Welcome to the field of project management, if you are ready for it. Okay, there is a, another classification I wanted to uh, tell you. Where do I belong? <coughs> On a contractor's side, this is a very, uh, you, you may think this is a very, uh, what to say, dirty job or low profile job, not like that. This is the first job you should take. From, first from graduate, you should go to a contractor and you should go to a contractor <coughs> with no systems in place. If you go get into a GED in LNT, LNT has an age-old, uh, well-tested, time-tested, well-developed uh, work process, workflow. So you don't have to worry about anything. For everything there is a process. Everything is process, process, process. You have an SOP, standard operating procedure. You do it, you pass it. You don't pass it. There is nothing interesting in it. You will never become anything. You will become a what? Uh, zombie. Like, so the next to this, this is what? Like a machine only you will become. So I suggest you should go to a contractor who does not have any system. Who does not, just starting, or just started a few years now, who does not want to start any, uh, have any system. And this is a place where you really, really, really learn. I learned like that only. I learned bar bending from a bar bender. 
I tell you one interesting story. When I was a site engineer, a small uh, residence project, a bar in the barbender, very, very poor fellow. Right leg one slipper, left leg another color of slipper. So that kind of poor person. So I used to supply the steel. I never showed him the bill. What quantity of steel I supply. Some steel will come. He did the bar bending, bar bending scheduling and all that. And at last, you see only some four pieces of this size. He never wasted any steel. And then he gave a calculation how much kilograms he put. Almost matching, maybe one, two kilograms difference. He never wasted any steel. And then, then I thought this must be my first guru or that I thought. I learned bar bending from him. And so at the moment uh, you start concreting, all other bar benders, other contractors, they will fly away. This fellow will take his youngsters and then go below the shuttering. No one will go below the shuttering when concreting is uh, going on for fear. It may fall down. This fellow will go and then he will teach his uh, uh, teammates how to correct it, with how it sags, from how they walk, and uh, how they pour the concrete, in what fashion they come, and where the sag will happen, how to rectify it is all he used to teach. I learned bar bending from a bar bender only, not from the college. College did not teach me. So, if you want to really learn it, go to a small contractor also if available. Go to start small contractor, start from your, try to develop your own systems, try to develop the company. Then, when, when the owner knows that it is going to help him, in many ways, he may adopt it and he may keep you also. So, this is the, the real learning keeps by doing things in an area where unexplored or unsystematic. If you go to, suppose if you go to LIT, it is all systematic. You will, after five years, you will become a, uh, you know all the processes. But you don't know if outside the process is not, something is not right, you don't know how to do it. And if you go to the field, uh, to work, that kind of contractor, you will have opportunities to learn, you, your thinking will start, you will be pushed to the corner, anxious to think, and then repel, Repent, all that you will do, you will go on your own, and you will have a better exposure. I, to sum it, to, to be very precise, at that time, I know how many nails per square meter of uh, that one room will take place. And I counted one kg of uh, uh, one and a half inch nail, how many, and then two inch nail, how many, and all I know. To that extent, because that owner was like that, he never bothered and then he wanted to throw somebody, I don't know, you complete the work, he will say. So when you are pushed to that limit, then you will think about how and all you can control the cost, how and all. So this kind of thinking and learning will come from a small place where there is no system. If you, if at all, if you have any opportunity to wait until the contractor, please get in the at least one year you work under him, then you will become the finest in here. And this is the most comfortable position, client side. Side. <laughs> okay, questioning, throw in the paper, come to the, uh, reject the wall, go to the end of the day, go, and then the, you see the wall is not aligned, and then one foot away, and then you tell the wall, demolish the wall, and then come to internet and then see some Facebook. So this is a very comfortable position, but not always. You will not grow in this position. You can only enjoy it. Okay, if you get into any age, if you get into this, you will become lazy, you will not learn. At my age, what will happen, you know, when you go to the client side now, it will be very comfortable. When you reach my age, <coughs> a person of your age will come and teach you what is civil engineering. This will not happen when you go into client side at a very early age. This position, you should go when you reach 40 plus and at that time, you can really add value to the client. Then the client will give you lakhs and lakhs. You will work this list, but you will add value. Vision, mission, you will be at that level. You will not be in the lower level. You really add value to the organization, then the organization will value you, and then they will give you a big price back. So 40 plus only you should think about going, moving to the client side. Don't become lazy by going to the client side now. And on the borders. This is another uh, uh, challenging, interesting, but only few people can uh, take this. Military engineering services. Heard of this? Yes. 
Yes. Engineering Services and Border Road Organization, BRO we call it. So, in the army, army will not always stand in the border. Only there's another called the E and the E and I and BRO. Only these two people will be there in the border always. You will think uh, the border road, border uh, the military forces are standing, not always. Not, uh, not everywhere, not always. Mostly this border road organization and ENU, MN <coughs> something is there. MES. They are, uh, huh? MES. No, military engineering service. Mm. That is different. Uh, that is inland. They have another division called E and uh, MU or something is there. I don't think call it correctly. They are electromechanical engineers will be there. And border road organization civil engineers will be there. They ensure that uh, the arms, food supplies and the medical supplies are reaching these guys in the border uh, places. They will be always in the move, and this is one very, very challenging job. And they, they, uh, for civil engineering, they are providing wonderful opportunities. Uh, for this, you have to write some examinations. You have to look for the UPSC paper and then write examinations. And if it has some sense to serve the country, under challenging environment, you can take up this. From consultant side, this is also a, a bit. Uh, Convenience in India, but outside uh, this world. But convenience in India, because the <coughs> the, the systems are not uh, very stringent on consultant. Consultant is seen as a god. It is a god, of course. Consultant is an advisory level. For this, uh, I would not suggest you to go now. After you do some masters in correspondence or uh, take a break and do some masters, after that only you should go to think about. Otherwise, your growth path uh, will not be good. Uh, if it is only Indian consultant, you can join now and then grow to some extent. You can see in Indian consulting organization, you can see bachelor's degree people with uh, all the guys with uh, director level. But there are many international organizations who have founded their office in Bangalore. Atkins is here. Arcadis is here. These are all international organizations. They don't recognize our bachelor's degrees. And they don't have to. We know what, what our bachelor's degree is worth. So if you have opportunity for the, on the consultant side, it's also a wonderful field. If you have R&D, higher studies, uh, more learning, uh, inclination is there, you can think about uh, taking a break, going outside, if you are uh, fortunate enough to spend your time. Then do a tech talk. You can do a master's here also in the 80s. Then you can join this kind of companies. For one position, BIM uh, coordinator, Arcadi is looking for last one year, they don't get the right candidate. BIM coordinator, they are not getting the right candidate. And highway engineer, they are not getting at least six months, the post is vacant in Bangalore. They are not getting it. They want master's degree. No, they are not getting the. In, you say jobs are not available, unemployed, but jobs are there. And government service. This is the most comfortable hour of all, but you have to compromise most on many fronts. I don't have much to say. I don't want to say and uh, say uh, displace your uh, mental compost. I don't recommend this. As personally, if you ask me, I don't recommend this, even if you have some service mentality. I joined government for only one reason. Before joining government, I never had any holiday. I joined government only one reason. At least Saturday, Sunday, I can have holiday. But after joining this department, highways and rural roads department, I realized that even Saturday, Sundays, you cannot have holidays. And that was uh, one more reason to quit. I don't recommend this. And last, the best one. You know what? Anyone? You? Entrepreneur. <laughs> that is the best. Doing anything on your own, becoming on your own is the best. You know the subject or don't know the subject. After two years of your experience with some small contractor, get, get trained in whatever, the earlier slide, whatever I have shown you, in which area you want to have some interest, go to that contractor get some training how the business works and when you work under those contractors you know how to treat your employees or at least 
If you work with a bad contractor, you know how not to treat your employees. Okay, get to know this, then start on your own. This is the best thing to do on your own. Doing anything on your own is the best thing. And if you keep an employee, become an employee, for 15 years your salary is almost constant. Maybe 10 percentage increment also on is very difficult. 3 percentage, 4 percentage, 5, 10, maximum 10 percentage. Earlier 30 percentage and all I got some time back. But nowadays getting 10 percentage is a, itself is a dream. So you are in, after 10 years only you will see a gradual increase. But if you become an entrepreneur, first few years it will be almost flat. Then it will exponentially grow based on your interest. A little bit of luck is also there, very little bit. I tell you what, uh, how to treat this or how to take up this in the last. And I strongly recommend this for all of you. Because today's environment, now you say unemployment, but there are a lot of jobs in the market. Have you ever tried, whenever there is a tap is leaking at your home, have you ever tried calling a plumber? Has he come on the same day? No. 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 On his convenience. On his convenience only. Yes, the only thing is, if the toilet uh, flush is not working, we call a plumber. He will say today, tomorrow, today, after two days only he will come. And then when he comes also, he will not repair that. If you change the washer or clean it and then put it, it will work. He will not do it. You know what he will say? Change it. Uh, the tap washer, he can clean it and do it. But he will not do it. He will say change it. That is the easiest for him. He will go to the market, he will soak. You know where the, the, the jobs are there. Why we don't get the service immediately? It is a small job, but we don't get people immediately. Okay, then I gave an idea to a guy and he went to Hyderabad. He started his uh, company. He was a plumber there. He is basically an electrical uh, IT holder. Uh, plumber. He came as a plumber there. And I told him, you try, he knows the the repair and materials and all. You know the speed at which the today's construction is going on, nothing is quality oriented. All are just to show color, paint, show the picture and the IT engineers, they go to the bank and give the loans. All buildings which was which were consulted, uh, constructed after my building already started leaking in the bathroom, wherever the bathroom is there in the flat, flats, all the walls started leaking. Which means the quality of construction is very, very weak and each new flag comes to a maintenance stage in three years, which is supposed to come in 10 years. Nowadays it is coming in two years, three years time also the maintenance stage comes. I gave an idea, this is a promising field. Take uh, some two, three guys with you and then he trained them using the latest material. In Saudi Arabia all the latest the sea lines, uh, leakage, arresting things, tile uh, adhesives, many materials have come already. 3M tapes are there. If a glass is broken, you just paste a 3M tape that stays in. So, how to make a, um, a non-strengthened glass into a strengthened glass. See this, this is now done. And then some uh, agency comes and says that uh, no, no, all these glass are uh, non-strengthened glass. I want all uh, heat strengthened glass. Instead of replacing this glass, and there are materials coming in 3M. It's a sticker, transparent sticker. You paste it on the sticker, this glass becomes a tempered glass. How? Even if it breaks, it doesn't uh, fall down into uh, shattering pieces, sharp pieces. It stays. So it becomes a shock proof uh, glass also. So like this, I gave an idea. He is already doing it and he has already taken uh, four or five vehicles, small vehicle. Each area he allotted one vehicle and then he is doing on his own. AKA this. So there is a lot of opportunities if you do at a smaller uh, scale. And you see, if you start a big company, your, uh, your, your clients will say credit. They will say that after one month I will give the payment, but they will never give the payment. But if any leakage, if you go take a guy and arrest it, what is more important? Arresting the leakage is more important because the flat below guy is crying. So he will be ready to spend any amount up front. Payments are all up front. You can say give 300, only then I can arrest this tap leak. You can say 5000, only then I can arrest this bathroom leak. 
So this is very, very promising field, uh, I can say. If you want to start at a small scale, this is a very good uh, opportunity. I strongly, strongly recommend to something on your own. You have your own terms, you have your own time, you have your own holidays. You have your own holidays. Then you have your own day. Okay, if you decide to be employed, what employment skills do I need? Using initiative and self-motivated. If you are very much self-motivated, you are for entrepreneurship. Your self-motivation, if you decide to be an employee, you, the, your self-motivation, someone will make money out of your self-motivation. This is one of the basic skills. So this self-motivation, this is there in the skills list last 15 years, and it is going to be there for a few more years also at least. It's not going to be out of the list. Organization skills, the recent years, last five years, it is appearing organization skills. How to behave in an organization? Because every organization has its own culture. You have to adapt to that culture when you get into an organization. And if you start your own organization, you will build your own brand. Every brand has, has a value in the market. It's called brand equity, we call it. In business terms, it's called brand equity. This organization uh, skill is last five years it is there, and it is going to be there in the future also. Working under pressure. So this is uh, wherever you go or which side you are there, and today's tremendously changing business environment demands you, pushing you to the edge to perform. You cannot escape from this, and this is going to be there forever in my opinion. Ability to learn and adapt. See, Charles Darwin wrote a sentence. This is not the very most intelligent that survived. It's only the most adaptable that survived. The annals of history. So the more you adapt, the more chances you will stick to the company. Adapt to the changing culture, adapt to the changes in the environment, adapt to the change in the boss. So most of the times, you may be thinking that you are working in a company, looking for a company. Actually, you are working for a boss. So when taking up an opportunity, you have to choose your boss wisely. The way how they are interviewing you, you also have to. There will be an opportunity for you to ask question. Uh, we'll elaborate more when we go into interview in this case. And communication and interpersonal skills. This is there earlier, and this is now, and this will be there forever. Your communication <coughs> skills. In project management, there is a question that what the project manager is doing, what the project manager is doing. He is doing communication. 90% of the project manager's work time is spent on communications. This has this, that important <coughs> teamwork. This was uh, not there, and this is going to be there, but this skill may be required forever in future also. Negotiation skills. What is uh, negotiation? Coming to an agreement. Yes. You are right. <coughs> Not what you want, actually. In many cases, you may be confronted, you may be challenged, and then there are different ways of uh, communication skills and communication platforms where the negotiation can be used. So when you go further or when you read and prepare for PMP examination, you will know the value of this. Diversity and difference. Valuing diversity and difference. This is becoming increasingly popular. Five years before this was not there. This came appearing in, in 2016 onwards. Diversity and difference. So as I explained to you, like companies like Sabi, they are strong matrix organization. When you work for a construction company, most of them will be either civil engineering background or with the accounting <coughs> safety. That's all, maximum. But if you work in a different organization like uh, SAVI, 
you have people with you have to behave work with people uh, they form a matrix uh, organization different uh, verticals will be there one person from finance will be there one person from procurement will be there one person from legal will be there so you have to everyone's interest is different for the same product construction of a factory is a like glycon plant interest is different different people have different interest uh, recently i executed one project where it's a project within a project so my uh, area is i will explain to you it is a vessel 1900 metric ton vessel came from china and then the task is to make it upright and then put it in place for this our safety department told comfortably we need a 4500 metric ton crane 4500 metric ton crane i have never even imagined in my life that that is existing but that was the first time after 6 months they sourced that crane is available in china and after 4 months the crane came not a single piece it came in 2220 trucks 40 feet container trucks it came then we used about 20 cranes to assemble this big crane and my business here is in that uh, project is civil engineer i was posted as a civil engineer in that project i was a bit uncomfortable when i was posted as a civil engineer i looked at my director my director smiled at me uh, we know your work uh, in this project you are a civil engineer go do your work then when he went the contractor side engineer came and he introduced the himself as dr tarik allah and he is a phd in soil mechanics and foundation engineering from cairo university then i thought i am not under employed i am over employed for my bachelor's degree they had given me an opportunity to work with that kind of people and then our task was to make the ground stable to sustain the weight of the crane as well as the vessel 1900 then 4500 so the total weight should be sustained the ground should not sink because it is on the sea shore and then this is the task so we have to conduct a plate load test and then we prove that uh, the crane is not going to sink even after lifting the vessel vertical in the wind to vertical position so different roles will roles will change so i was a project engineer project manager all that now i am working as a project engineer in one project i was sent as a civilian then this is how we have to value the differences and the diversity this is what is i call as a diversity in a big project we are only with a very very small element project is big i have nothing to do with the vessel but my worry was to make the ground stable when this operation is going problem solving skills this was last to take is this is there and in future also this is going to be the number one skill required when you future proof this is the number one skill required and this is the number one skill missing from space <coughs> engineering fraternity in india because the mind is not uh, trained to think the numerical and it skills so this it skill doesn't mean only the software it doesn't apply to software and some many of the roles in today's environment in in our company also they sound like a <coughs> software profession but actually it is doing something civil engineering procurement the procurement is called as a, as a te- technology resource or sorry procurement guy is called as a technology resource person <coughs> technology resource expert and then his his boss is called as a technology resource architect what is that technology sir but he is doing procurement but his profession is like this so in in 10 years from now whatever positions assistant manager general manager the planning engineer procurement engineer all these may vanish because most of the things are becoming you know automated as i explained to you how the PO is raised for um, uh, lowest and most credible supplier. Like these things are getting automated in the construction industry or so on and so forth. So the profession is going to change. Ten years from now, the whatever uh, the uh, designations you see today, 
Then 50 percentage may not be available, will not be available, I'm sure. And these are the skills required for becoming employed. To become employed, you have to start your job search somewhere. Okay? How to start the job search? What are the qualities required for a job search? The first is the positive attitude. You have to exhibit the positive attitude to a you are company where you are going for an interview. This is one, you sending the positive vibes. This will convince the face of it. Depend on your strength. As I told you, your strength will continue to your strength till your last day. But your weakness will continue to be your weakness. So work on your skill, strength. Strengthen it more, work on it, depend on it more on your strength not on your weaknesses. Okay, highlight your strength and depend on your strength only and choose the area where your strength can be exhibited in a positive way. <coughs> Respect yourself. This is called, uh, we can say, self-discipline, self-esteem, self-respect, whatever name you call it. I call it as a respect yourself. If you give a word, you have to abide by it. You don't respect your word. Who else will? Here, whatever you say to any contract or client, ah, tomorrow or Tomorrow comes, tomorrow never comes there. Then say, Karna sir, it doesn't go with that. In, in, in outside India, when you can decide the date. They will ask you how many days, five days, six days, ten days also you can say. But tenth day you have to deliver. Because they all expect you to respect yourself first, which means you have to respect your word first. So this is one of the qualities which you should expect or exhibit in the, in the job search. Be yourself. This means be creative and whatever you have presented, it may be little uncomparable with other guys because everyone has a different question paper in life. So let them write on your own way. You be on your own. You don't try to copy from them because their question is different, your question is different in the life. So don't try to copy plagiarism or that. Whatever you have done it, exhibit it and then highlight your strength in that. Resume writing. So what do you think uh, is the CV doing to you? Resume doing to you. It is not getting you a job. The CV is not getting the job. CV is only initiating a dialogue. It just takes you to the table and makes him listen to you. CV is only a tool 